guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you are brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And we are in the city of San Myshuno, not doing an apartment renovation, which is totally wild to me. I've actually never built a lot in San Myshuno. I have never actually gone on to like one of these other lots, like the, what, the karaoke clubs and stuff like that, or the karaoke bars, I should say. And this was actually where the old salt house was. So this, I didn't even look at the lot type. Wow, that's bad. I didn't even look at the lot type. I think it was a, I think it was a community lot. I'll have to look at it again, but it looked as though someone could actually live there. And it was just like this big, like old mill building is kind of what it seemed like. And I recently have been wanting to build kind of like a refurbished, I don't know, um, what's the word? kind of like a, I guess refurbished is the best word, uh, an old mill building that's been turned into something else, like a like an office building or a residential lot. lot. Because I actually, where I work, um, our offices are in these really old mill buildings right in the downtown area. And that's where our offices are. And they're absolutely beautiful, like restored. That's the word, kind of restored and then somewhat gutted a little bit and made into, you know, something else, something functional. So I wanted to build an old mill building and this is what I came up with. So I wanted to make sure that it had skylights, that it had kind of like a clock tower. And it took me a while to kind of figure out exactly what items to use to achieve the look I was going for. Like those windows, I'm not kidding you. This is the build I mentioned in my last apartment renovation. It took me probably about two days to even figure out the window situation to make it look real and make it look authentic and and I don't know it was just really hard for me to decide and especially with the varying wall heights because I knew that I wanted essentially an apartment in the top floor so on the third floor is where the apartment is with the skylights and all that fun stuff and I wanted it to have the highest ceilings so it was hard to figure out what the other wall heights should be to make it one look proportional and two to find windows that would work we have like what five tall wall height windows so the windows that i actually ended up using aren't even for the tall wall height they're for the medium wall height but they worked perfectly fine so it just took a long time for me to feel comfortable with it because i've never done something like this before i think i've mentioned that i'm not very good with community lots so since this is not you know a house <laughs> it's it is more so kind of like a community lot look i really struggled with it but i love 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 how it all came out and right now I'm actually just lifting some debug plants because they were kind of these hanging like draping plants that I absolutely adored. So I'm lifting them up to these kind of non-accessible balconies um, on some of the windows, just on the top level. I was gonna put planter boxes on maybe the middle level there, but I ended up leaving it be. And now in this little kind of clock tower area is where the staircase is to the top of the building to the apartment so it took me a while to kind of configure the stairs because i knew i could make it work i had done it off camera just to test it and then it took me just a hot minute to like figure out exactly how to configure them again because sometimes that tool is a little hard to use that that kind of like arrow pull it over to this side twist it this way blah 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 so i finally figured it out and i got it to work but there's also access as you could see on the side of the building too that's kind of like the fire escape exit is what my thought was so there are two ways to get into this apartment and um either will work doesn't matter which one and now we're on the interior and this is something i have never done before i have never done any kind of like residential lot with an entirely open floor plan so aside from the bathroom nothing is sectioned off like at all there's a half wall basically near the entryway in the kitchen but that is it it's all completely open and with the amount of sunlight that pours in here and the big tall windows i am completely infatuated with it like i wish i could live here and i totally went out of my comfort zone and chose pieces of furniture that i didn't even know if they really worked together i just plopped them down and i was like do i like the overall look because sometimes i feel like when you put down some items together you're like, no, that can't work. There's no way that doesn't match. It doesn't look good until you get a bunch of other items together and you kind of look at the finished product. And that's what got me. Once I saw the finished product, I was like, oh my God, yes, all of this works. I'm so excited. So this is kind of that little entryway with the two entrances, the fire escape and the clock tower entrance. And then this is just the little tiny kitchen area. So like I said, it is the only part that's quote unquote sectioned off, which I really liked. I don't end up keeping these countertops because they looked 
too bright, honestly. They didn't look industrial or rustic enough, and I did kind of want that look. I didn't want it to be straight up industrial, but I do really like using these kind of industrial countertops and cabinets and whatnot. And then I put these little shelves right above the counters, right below the cupboards, and I do clutter them up like pretty intensely, <laughs> at least in my opinion. I, I kind of went ham and I adored it. And I also used this really long table from Jungle Adventure, which I don't get to use very often. And I love, love, love the look that I came up with. And at first I was thinking about sectioning off the bedroom a little bit, at least maybe a half wall to kind of divide it. And then I thought, nope. You know what? I don't even care. <laughs> it's gonna be out here in the middle with everything else and I'm so happy I did that. I think it looks so, so pretty. And I was on Pinterest looking at like industrial loft apartments and there are a lot ranging from, you know, being industrial loft apartments in maybe New York. There were some in California I looked at. Uh, they're all over the place, really, right? Anywhere where there were old mill buildings. So there were a lot in New England too. So that was very, uh, that kind of hit home obviously because I work in an old mill building and I have seen that there have been a few of them in this downtown area where I work that have been turned into different apartments. And I went online to look at their websites to see what the interiors look like. And oh my gosh, if I could afford one of these, I would live there. I feel like the heating costs would probably be through the roof. So I don't really want to do that because in New England, I mean, it gets very cold in the winter and even in the fall. But yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I wish there were some kind of in a more rural area. So I kind of live in a more rural area. I don't live in the city that I work in. But yeah, I kind of wish there were more because I would love to live in something like this. But yeah, we're kind of cluttering up the kitchen right now. And like I said, I kind of go crazy with it. I have been using debug items in the kitchen for a while now because now I can't stop. So I use like empty bowls and glasses, mugs, and in this one, I actually use some empty plates and I stack them all with that OMF, that red OMS, OMFP shelf. I think that's what it is. That red shelf that I use, I use it all the time. I would not be able to do the clutter organization that I do here without it. So if you guys are trying to become like clutter masters and you kind of are struggling with getting items to the height that you need them, get this shelf. It is a CC item. However, you don't have to leave it in your bills, right? So it's accessible to anyone who doesn't use CC and it's just a shelf. It has not broken. It has caused me zero problems whatsoever. There haven't been any updates that have been needed. I have not changed this in like the year or two that I've been using it. So it's totally, totally worth it because as you can see, this is what allowed me to stack the bowls together. And I was so excited about it. I absolutely love this so much. Like I love this kitchen. This might be my favorite kitchen and it's not like it's any different than some of the other kitchens that I've made, but I just love the stacking of the plates and the bowls and all that stuff because it's so real. It's so realistic looking. And the stacked plates reminded me of the CC items from Hey Harry and Felix um, Andre, the kitchen stuff pack that they created. They had plates that like clipped together and actually stacked, which are beautiful. And I don't understand why we don't have something like that in the game, but it's fine because if you get that pack, you will, or you can just do that trick there. And now I'm putting one of these baskets on the table and I pulled out a bunch of apples. So I was making that like a fruit basket and I end up pulling out plantains, even though I'm gonna pretend they're bananas. I don't know why we don't have just like strictly bananas <laughs> in The Sims 4. It's kind of odd to me because we have like apples and pears and lemons and all that kind of stuff, but we don't have bananas, we have plantains. So I pull out plantains and I end up putting it in the little kind of corner countertop where I put a bread box and that little hot cocoa mix thing from, I think it's Outdoor Retreat, right? Yeah, I think that came with Outdoor Retreat. And yeah, even though the kitchen's pretty small, it's pretty cluttered and yet organized for how much is in it. And of course there ends up being at least one free countertop because you need at least one countertop to be able to actually prepare or cook anything. So I did leave that open. And the dining table, I absolutely love because I figured since this was such a big place, maybe the Sim that lives here does entertain fairly often. And my kind of thought for this, because there's nothing on the second and first level of this building. My thought was that the Sim that moved in here bought the entire building completely gutted upstairs and made it their living space. And downstairs, they're planning on making it a retail space of some sort. I was talking to my boyfriend about it and he was like, it would be so cool if it was like a, a two level bookstore or library or something. And I was like, yeah, that would be neat. But I'm kind of thinking, I don't really know. I'm kind of thinking of like an art gallery or 
I don't know, maybe like furniture? I, I have no idea. It could be literally anything that you guys want it to be. I don't furnish it in this build. As you can see, it's only like 16 minutes long. So um, that is definitely not enough time for me to furnish all three levels to the degree that I would be furnishing them and decorating them. But that's kind of my idea. So I did set, set this as a residential lot, but if you like the idea of the Sim kind of living in the apartment upstairs of their retail space, you could make it a retail lot and they could just stay there. Like, I mean, you might have to own another property just for the sake of how this game functions, but it's kind of an idea and it makes me think this, uh, this was perfect timing. Kawaii Stacy actually has a mod that she's been working on. Apparently it's like 90% done, according to her on Twitter. And I'm trying to pull up the description right now, but basically it's, so your Sims can actually own like multiple lots and choose which ones they call home. In the sense of, they can maybe own three businesses, but it actually counts as a residential lot as well. And they can actually live above it. And there's kind of like the idea of fixer upper type stuff where maybe you can flip properties and sell them. So I'm really, 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 really intrigued by this mod that is most likely coming very, very soon. She just had to make sure that there was nothing else like it out there and that it was different. So she wasn't just recreating something that someone had already made, but I am stoked. So basically it's gonna be called, I think she said live in business or I'm sorry, that was the one that already exists, but it's a little bit different. So that's basically the concept though, is that it's gonna be a live in business and she has some screenshots there and stuff like that. And it's just, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what that looks like because I feel like this lot would be perfect for something like that. And considering that this mill building was actually reasonably small, I was like, what do I, what do I do in the back? Like, I I don't know if I was thinking it was a retail lot or maybe like a restaurant or something in the first or second level, I still wanted it to have some curb appeal. I didn't want it to just be completely empty, but in the back I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll toss some trees back there and these little sectioned off gardening areas. So maybe it's kind of like a public garden, like a city garden. And I really liked that idea because if it is a community lot of some type, maybe Sims will show up and actually plant some stuff. So I don't know. I'm I'm really excited to kind of see how it functions. I think I'm going to try to function it, like kind of run it as a residential lot, but then also run it as a community lot of some type and just see how it works because I haven't played around with something like that before. And now I'm in the debug menu pulling out some street lamps and stuff like that just to make it have, like I said, a little bit more curb appeal because in the front with the tiles that I kind of put down, it was a little drab. It didn't look like it was a very lived in or functional spot until I dressed it up a little bit more, at least in my opinion. So I do put the sign here. I have no idea what it's gonna be yet, right? But I do put some hedges in the front as well, just to make it a little bit more colorful, a little bit more welcoming and some outdoor lights because I did want this to have a little bit of a glow to it at night. And I think I do actually flip them so you guys can see it. I should have taken a screenshot of the nighttime view. That actually would have been smart. I didn't do it. Sorry. <laughs> and then I actually put some kind of like I like some greenery. I was gonna say ivory. <laughs> some greenery, some ivy is what I was trying to say on some parts of the outside of this build as well, because I thought it kind of fit considering that there were those overgrown hanging plants as well from those little balconies. And then I actually go back in because I forgot to do this little entryway and I actually forgot to give them a TV over the fireplace. But I do that very, very quickly and it's not really enough time for me to go into extraneous detail about it but I really hope you guys like this I cannot wait to hear your thoughts about this one and I'd love to hear any more ideas that you have so I will catch you guys next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon bye